So Black Forest Labs have launched Flux 2 this week, and just yesterday they released the open weights for Flux 2 Dev on Hugging Face, where you can check out the open weight models for Flux 2. Let's go through some of the features. What's new compared to Flux 1? First of all, Flux 1, as we've all played around with over the year, is a very phenomenal image generation model. And now, Flux 2 has improved a lot more in terms of image aesthetics and texture. It can also be used for something new, like referencing up to 10 images simultaneously as references, say, when you're doing image editing tasks. So this model isn't just text-to-image or image-to-image. -image. It also supports using images as references for editing, kind of like what we used to do in Nano Banana and Quen Image Edit. And the cool thing is, it can handle up to 10 images at once. The image detail and photorealism have improved a lot more with Flux 2. One of the cool things about text rendering is that it's a lot clearer now, as you can see from the prompt adherence, which has improved a lot. I really like that Flux 2 now supports the prompt JSON format. I've found that it's able to interpret prompts where you can also focus on describing things like what kind of styles, camera angles, lens shots you want for your generated image, as well as mood and coloration. So with JSON structured prompts, it's more precise, allowing you to create your images with more detailed control over what you want in controllable image generation. The world knowledge shown here indicates that Flux 2 has been trained with more real-world knowledge, for example, lighting, spatial logic, and that results in more coherent scenes for your image generation. And one of the cool things about Flux 2 is that it can generate 4 megapixel-sized images. That's 4 million pixels. If you look up 4 megapixel resolution on Google, you'll see it refers to cameras that support more than 1080 PhD resolution which is a pretty large image size for an AI image generation model. And it's not just about pixel enlargement. Flux 2 actually supports more pixels natively at that 4 megapixel resolution. So this will give you way more detail than the 1024 pixel images you used to get with previous image generation models. Let's go check it out on Hugging Face and also in Comfy UI. On Hugging Face, once you grant access to the models and press the Agree button, you can download those files. But the Flux 2 dev model is actually 64 gigabytes, so it requires almost 64 gigabytes of VRAM to use. Normally, no consumer PC can handle that. So, the Comfy UI team has partnered with NVIDIA to create an open source FP8 version of the Flux 2 dev model. That means it's more consumer friendly. So if you have, for example, an NVIDIA 4090 or 5090, you should be able to run the FP8 model. The FP8 model in the Comfy UI Hugging Face repo for Flux 2 is right here. It's about 35 gigabytes in file size. Something interesting, we're not using the previous Flux text encoder and VAE anymore. The VAE here is a new Flux 2 VAE, specifically designed for Flux 2. It makes this VAE better than previous versions, and the text encoder is now using Mistral 3 Small, either the Flux 2, FP8, or BF16 models. You can use whichever one fits your GPU and how much VRAM you have to handle the file sizes. I'm downloading this one right now. The prompt adherence has improved a lot because of the text encoder. It's now using Mistral language models, which understand prompts better than older clip-based text encoders like T5. So. All three files go into their respective subfolders by name, diffusion model, text encoder, and VAE, inside your Comfy UI models folder. Obviously, in your Comfy UI setup, you'll find those folders, diffusion models, text encoders, and VAE. I've downloaded the text encoder, Mistral 3 Flux 2 BF16, and I'm also downloading the Flux 2 VAE. Lastly, the most important part is the diffusion model and I'm using the Flux 2 Dev FP8 Mix model. This workflow is available to download on Comfy UI Blocks. You'll find all the explanations there, plus links to download everything you need. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see two workflows. One is the Flux 2 FP8 workflow that you can run directly. As they mention here, the FP8 versions from NVIDIA reduce VRAM requirements by 40%. So that means taking the BF16 model size and subtracting 40%,
bringing it down to around 30 something gigabytes of VRAM usage. Let's try that out after I finish downloading the Flux 2 model. I've got Flux 2 loaded here, FP8 mix, and the clip encoder. When you update your Comfy UI to the latest version, you'll see the Flux 2 text encoder option appear here. So once you select this type, that means you've successfully updated your Comfy UI. In older versions, if you tried loading this workflow, you'd get a red error box like this. That's because previous versions of Comfy UI didn't include the Flux 2 scheduler or the empty Flux 2 latent image node, both of which are new native nodes in Comfy UI that support Flux 2. So once you update your Comfy UI, my way is using Git. Just run git pull origin master in the command prompt for the Comfy UI branch, and you'll see all these updates, including Flux support. When you see these indicators, you know your Comfy UI is up to date. Then, when you load this workflow, the Flux 2 scheduler and empty Flux 2 latent nodes will load without the red box error. Now let's check out the workflow here. It's pretty typical. We've got the diffusion model, text encoder, and VAE, all three model files loaded. You also have a clip text encoder for the positive prompt. With Flux, you don't really need a negative prompt. It's just an empty text box. If you do add a negative prompt and connect it to the K sampler or whatever sampler node you're using for Flux guidance, that's fine. But since the Flux 1 release, it's been the same setup, including the custom sampler. This part goes more in depth into how you combine Sigma, sampler, and guider together in the custom sampler. The Flux 2 scheduler, that's the new thing you need to run Flux 2. Now, let's look at the reference image section. This is something interesting. It's like Quen Image Edit or Nano Banana, where you can reference any existing image as an element in your new edited AI generated image. You can input, as they mentioned, up to 10 reference images simultaneously in a single image generation. By default, it comes with two image containers for you to use. You'll load your image in and then use image scale to total pixels, which aligns your images together. The VAE encodes this and connects the latent data to the reference latent. Now, reference latent is something new in these recent updated image generation models. You can use reference latent and connect it through the conditioning, letting the pipeline know to use that latent data as a reference when your text prompt mentions it or specifies where to place those objects in your new generated image. For example, say I've got a character in reference image 1. If you don't want to use it, you can just highlight that group and bypass it. So if I don't need reference image 2, I can click Bypass. That way, we're only focusing on using image 1. As you can see, all these yellow lines for conditioning are linked together for all the reference latents. If you bypass 1, it'll ignore image 2 and move forward to the sampler. As I just mentioned, the text prompts in Flux 2 now natively support the JSON format structured prompt. So. I've created some text prompts based on the examples from the Flux official website. I use this format to ask an AI to generate 10 text prompts using the JSON structure. I got all of these generated and, as you can see, the color can even use HTML style color codes in Flux 2. So I'm going to try this one to see how it looks in an actual image. As you can see, we've got camera angles and lens types mentioned, plus color. We have the color code and the mood in here too. And since my text prompt mentions a young female fashion designer, it'll use that as a reference for the character. Here, let me put my window in full screen so you can see, even though I'm using the FP8 models, it's still consuming about 60 something gigabytes when it's running. That's because we've got Mistral and Flux 2 combined, 30 something plus 30 something gigabytes. That adds up to about 60 something or even 70 gigabytes right now. Okay, so going back to Comfy UI, and it's using the reference of this character as the fashion designer. And in this text prompt, it's using a very specific blue color code here. And as you can see, it's been applied correctly. That's really cool. You can also Google HTML color codes, like on this page, and try using them yourself. So this code was used in the text prompt, or maybe you could try it with, say, pink, and plug that into the flux prompt here too. Let's say I generate with the same text prompt, but I only change this color. Let's see how that looks. The generation speed isn't too slow, 
but the VRAM requirement, loading these giant files into memory, is getting really big. Right here, we've got a different color. But I should also be using this for the jacket. Let's run it again. So instead of blue as the base color, we'll have full pink for the jacket here. There you go. We changed the color to exactly what we wanted using that color code, and we can switch whatever styles we like. This is the first image I think is pretty cool. You know, in Flux, it's combining image editing models with text to image and image to image models all together in Flux 2. And the part I like most is that it natively supports structured prompts, the JSON structure. Some other models, like WAN 2.2 and others, claim to support it too. But if you make the JSON prompt more complex, those AI models won't handle it very well. In Flux 2, though, the structured prompt format is already officially defined. That means you can get this format from the Black Forest Lab's official documentation, specifically in the prompt guide for Flux 2 and it'll show you what the JSON structure looks like for your image prompts, including the base schema. For example, here, you describe the overall scene, the background colors, and so on, whatever you want. And it shows you examples right here. So basically, you can take these examples and feed them into a large language model. In my case, I used Quen3 for this. I already had some input text prompts for image generation, and it helped me convert those into structured JSON text prompts. And these image prompts I made here are specifically designed to test the new features in Flux because I gave the AI information about Flux 2 and asked it to help create prompts that highlight those capabilities. So all these text prompts are testing how well Flux 2 can run its new features. Let's try another one that I think looks pretty interesting. I'll paste this text prompt here. And here's the generated result. Robotic arms trying to hold up an apple. Actually, the prompt describes a growing red apple. So, yeah, it kind of looks like light is coming out from the apple here. And the detail is pretty nice so far, even though I'm using FP8 models. The resolution it's generating natively is already pretty large. Let's say we try something even larger, like full 1080p resolution, and see how that looks. The next text prompt I'm going to try includes a banner as well. I'll tweak it just a little and see what happens. And here we go. Two twin models holding a camera with a Benji AI banner in the background. Wait, the characters look like this because I forgot to turn off the reference latent. So it just applied the reference character's face to both people. Actually, using two reference images for two characters and see how it turns out. And since the text prompt says two identical twins, they should look almost exactly the same. But this time, I'm going to try with two different faces to get more detail. Here's the second try. After editing the text prompt to use two reference images, now I have two characters, and they're not identical twins, but two different people holding the camera. And it actually works for likeness. Their faces look similar but with slight differences. The prompt adherence is spot on. We described it like this. Young lady model 1, reference 1, holding a vintage camera, and reference 2, mirroring the pose, posing back to back. And that's exactly what we got. They're standing back to back, just like in the prompt. I also added text at the end. The background has a banner with text Benji AI. So sure enough, there's the banner in the back. Yeah. It follows the prompt really well in Flux, too. I'm going to try out another text prompt here. There are a lot, so I won't go through every single one, but I'll show you how they all turn out at the end of this video. I'll also attach the file so you guys can try it yourselves. All these structured JSON text prompts are really good because you can pinpoint exactly what camera, what lens, what kind of shot you want. Instead of cramming everything into one paragraph, which sometimes makes it hard for language models to interpret clearly. And by the way, with Flux2 text prompts, you can just get a great image in one pass, like this. And if you have enough VRAM, you might want to go even higher in resolution, or just upscale from this resolution later. If you need customizations to the workflow, I think we'll mostly be focusing on LoRa models. We can train our own LoRa character models, style to LoRa's, 
to use with Flux image generation, and that definitely improves the image generation content too. Here's a second try with the same text prompt and the two ladies as character references. I've bumped the scheduler steps up to 30, more steps, and lowered the resolution just for practical generation. And it does give more definition to the two characters. As you can see, both faces are clearly pulled from our reference images. So yes, it performs really well in likeness when referencing. Something else that's improved, especially for human anatomy, is the hands and fingers. You can clearly see the knuckles on the back of the hand here and on this person too. And for character aesthetics, it's definitely better than Flux 1. The object ratios have also improved, like the camera. It won't come out as an oversized vintage style camera or something weird like a BVSDR camera. It actually gets the proportions right, which helps a lot with overall object generation. Same goes for plants, indoor plants, banners. They don't end up too big or too small like they sometimes did in Flux 1. It does a pretty good job making way better AI-generated images. And the best part? It's open source. You can download it locally and run it yourself. It's a really great time to be in this space. So much good stuff has been dropping recently. I'll generate all these JSON-based text prompts and show you the results at the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.